Hey everyone, welcome to Crafting with JC, your go-to stop for all things DIY. On today's video, I'm sharing 20 of my favorite Dollar Tree DIYs. These projects only cost a few dollars to make, but they look high-end. Now let's get started. Okay, for this project, I'll be using this wood board from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to add some color with this water-based stain in the shade Special Walnut. So I'm just using a little cloth to apply the stain. I apply it on top and on the sides, and then once that's on all over, I wipe it down to remove any excess stain. I thought the wood could use some stenciling, so I'm going to be stenciling a beautiful pattern. This stencil pack is from Walmart. It comes with several designs, and I'll be using this one. I really like this pattern. It looks so beautiful on wood. I'll be using white chalk paint. So first, I tape down the stencil right in the center. I just tape it down on the sides. And then I dip my brush in the paint and I offload any excess paint on a paper towel. And this will help prevent the paint from bleeding underneath the stencil. And then I just apply the paint with a brush going in circular motions. I also like stippling the brush, especially on narrow areas. So I just continue applying the paint, making sure to offload or dab out the excess paint on the brush before stenciling. Once I'm done, I remove the stencil before it completely dries. I want to stencil the whole top surface, so I just reposition it to the left and I'm just trying to match the sides, although I do want a little gap between the stencil. And then I just apply the stencil, making sure to dab out the excess paint before stenciling. Once that's done, I place a stencil on the final side, trying to match the distance. I just matched it as best as I can. I don't think it was exactly even, but it was fine. It turned out beautiful. Once that dries completely, I'm going to be buffing on some clear wax to protect it. So you want to make sure to seal it with your preferred sealer. For the legs, I'll be using these wood pieces. These are from Dollar Tree. I believe these were wooden angels, and these came in a nice little pack. So I just glue that to the bottom, one on each corner. I use a little wood block to make sure the distance to the edge is even on all corners. And I'm using wood glue for a stronger hold. I do flip it over before it dries completely and I place some objects on top of the wood and then I give that some time to dry completely. And this super easy DIY is done. be using a couple of these long stem glass tea light candle holders from Dollar Tree. They do come in three sizes and I'll be using the medium and large size for this project. I will be painting these so I want to make sure the glass is clean and free from any dirt or residue. So I wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol which will help remove any grease or fingerprints. I usually use chalk paint when I'm painting glass, however for this one I'll be using plain black acrylic paint which will do the job as well. To add some texture and grit to the paint, I mix in some baking soda which will give the candle holder a unique texture finish. Alright, now it's time to brush the mixture all over the candle holder. I'll be painting a few layers starting with the first one. Now I just want to make sure to cover all areas thoroughly and get a good initial coverage on the entire surface of the candle holder. So after I finish the first layer on the first one, I paint the second one. Doing the same thing, brushing on the mixture all over. Before moving on to the second layer, it's crucial that the first layer of paint is completely dry. So to speed up the drying process, you can use a heat tool or a hair dryer. Just make sure the paint is thoroughly dry before proceeding because applying the second layer on wet paint can cause it to come off. For the second layer, I am switching to a round sponge brush. This brush gives great coverage and coats the glass evenly. Plus, it does add a nice texture to the surface which will look like cast iron once it's dried. Now let that dry completely. You can finish off with a sealer and this DIY is done. This next DIY is a continuation of the first. I will be adding a glass candle holder on top. I had a couple of options in mind, but honestly, I couldn't decide which one I liked more. For the first option, I'm going to be using this hobnail style candle holder from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the metal ring on top. I didn't care too much for it. It felt quite flimsy, but I guess you can also paint it black if you like. 
I turned the long stem candle holder over to glue I would use E6000 and I placed the clear candle holders on top like so. I really like how this one turned out. And for the second option, I'll be trying out this dark ribbed glass candle holder from Dollar Tree. I really love how simple and the clean design on this one. And here's how they look. They both look stunning, but I think I'm going to go with the first one because I have another plan for this one. I knew I wanted my next video to be on Dollar Tree stickers, so I headed to their sticker aisle and their metallic stickers immediately caught my attention. Seriously, the detail on these, stunning. I've never used these before and the ideas just kept popping in my mind. So for this DIY, I'll be using this little tray from Dollar Tree and this metallic sticker pack from Dollar Tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick out one of the stickers to place on the long side of the tray. So once I pick one, I carefully peel that off and I place that right in the center. And I make sure to press that down well, especially along the edges. And look how nice that looks already. I'm going to paint this tray and I'll be using this durable deco art paint and sealer in the shade Seaside Blue. So I apply the paint with a brush and I'll be completely covering the wooden tray with the paint. So I brush that on all over, including the bottom. On the side with the metallic sticker, I just paint right over that several times until it's completely coated. But the trick with these is to make sure it's completely painted over, but not so thick that you fill in and cover up the beautiful details. And so I just use a small brush to delicately remove any excess paint as well as to get to those hard to reach areas. To get the best coverage, you will want to layer in the paint, allowing it to dry in between before adding another layer. And a heat tool helps to speed up the process. Okay, once that's completely painted and it's dried, I'm going to sand along the sides of the tray. I'm only lightly sanding the edges and corners, avoiding the sticker. Next, I'm going to be applying some antique wax. This one is from Waverly, and I'm going to apply that with a damp cloth. You'll also need a dry cloth on hand. I did add a few drops of water to the wax as well to lightly thin it down. So I just apply the wax all over, especially in the areas where I sanded, buffing it in with a damp cloth, which helps to blend it in nicely, and then wiping it down with a dry one. And then I also apply the antique wax over the metallic detail as well as around it. I also use a small brush to apply it on top, making sure it gets into all those areas I want to be a little darker and then I wipe it down with a dry cloth. And I just keep going back and forth with a small detail brush and then wiping it down until I like the way it looks. And if there are any areas on the tray that look a little too heavy with the wax, I just blend it out and tone it down with a damp cloth. I want to elevate the tray and I'll be using these Dollar Tree wood pieces. These were little snowmen and they came in a pack. I'll also be rubbing on some of that antique wax just so that it blends nicely with the tray. I'm going to leave the color as is because I do love the contrast, but I do avoid applying the wax where I will be applying glue. Now initially, I wasn't planning on adding legs, otherwise I would have left the bottom unpainted or at least taped off the area where I applied glue before painting, but with that said, it still held quite well. Now I do carefully flip it over after a few minutes and I place some objects on top so that it bonds well. And there you have it. What a stunning transformation. canvases and I wanted to make a simple wooden lantern out of them. So for this DIY, I'll be using two burlap canvases from Dollar Tree. First thing I'm going to do is remove the staples back and front. You will be seeing all sides of the wood, so you'll definitely want to remove all the staples and burlap. I do also reinforce any of the joints that are wobbly with some wood glue. Then I sand it down and then I cover up the holes and gaps with a little bit of spackle. And once that dries, I sand it down. The frames are going to cross each other. And so on one of them, I'm going to mark the center, which is about four inches. 
and then I take the other frame and lay that on top right in the center and then I mark the width. And then I trim that piece that I marked out with my miter box and saw. I'm going to dry brush some white chalk paint on the frames and I just lightly brush that all over, not making it go on too opaque because I do want some of the wood underneath to still be seen. To glue together, I apply some glue on the ends of the cut wood and I place that right in the center of the frame like so. I stand it up and push them together and I use a little block to help with that but you want to make sure that the bottoms lay flat and stands evenly with the other frame. And I do the same thing with the other cut wood, making sure it's glued right in the center and the bottoms are flat on the surface and not wobbly. For the base, I will be using the square palette from Dollar Tree. I cut out the string hanger that's on the back. It was too hard to remove the staple, so I just snipped that off. I will be painting them white to match the lantern, so I brush that on all over the palette. Now it did go on opaque, I didn't use a bright brush and I thought it was going to look okay but in the end it didn't really match so I ended up sanding it down a bit and it looked a lot better. Now when you drop the palette in place it's going to be wobbly because of the two wood pieces on the back so to fix that you will want to place some wood underneath to balance it out. You can trim some paint sticks or stack some popsicle sticks and that will balance it out. And this simple lantern is done. Tree's tumbling tower blocks are hands down one of my favorite crafting supplies. I love crafting with these. For this DIY, I'll be using a box of these wooden tumbling tower blocks. One box comes with 72 blocks, and for this project, I'll be using 36 blocks. I'll be staining the blocks with this Americana gel stain from Deco Art in the shade Walnut. So I just apply that on the blocks and I'm using a cloth here but you can also use a brush. Now immediately after I apply the color, I wipe it down removing the excess stain. Now for these blocks, I'm applying the stain on one wide side. This is the only surface that's going to be seen. Also I'll be applying glue all over the sides so I want to make sure I don't get glue on those areas and just keep it bare. Now because I'll be using wood glue, I always prefer to stain the wood first. Glue tends to seep out between the joints and once that dries, it's really difficult for the wood to absorb the stain. I'll be using two of these thick wood blocks from Dollar Tree. Now one is going to be the top and the other the base of the riser. And I'm going to stain them as well, but before I do that, I do sand the ends first, or the end grain as you can see here. Otherwise, it's going to soak up a lot of stain. So sanding or sealing really helps to close the wood pores a bit. Now on the wood blocks, I'm only going to apply the stain on one surface side and the edges. The surface on the opposite side isn't going to be seen. It's going to be covered up, which you'll see later, so I leave that side unstained. For the other block, it's going to be the base, so you can stain it the same way or just the sides. I realize I wanted a little contrast with the blocks. Looking back, I kind of wish I painted it a different color, so I decided to add another layer of the stain to deepen the color. I'm going to be gluing the blocks together, but before I do that, I turn them all over so that when I glue them together, the blocks will look nice and flush when I turn it over. I'm gluing the blocks together side by side, and I'm using wood glue from Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to continue to glue the blocks together until I have 11, and I make two sets. After that, I glue seven blocks together side by side, and I make two sets. Once it's completely dried, I turn them all over, and then I'm going to glue all four together to form a rectangle. So I apply some wood glue on the sides of the seven, and I place those in between the ends of the longer side like so. And I just make sure that the corners are at a 90 degree angle. Now I did clamp it with some painter's tape on the sides while it dried. And once that's completely dried, I'm going to touch up the unstained area. The tumbling block rectangle is going to be placed in between the wood boards, and the blocks are slightly smaller than the boards, so I'll be applying a little bit of stain on the outer edge of the wood board. I make sure not to take it too far in, so I'm still gluing bare wood to bare wood. And then I touch up the blocks that didn't get stained. Finally, I apply some glue on the ends of the blocks, and I flip it over, and I place that on top of a wood board. 
and I just make sure that it's centered. And then I do the same thing and apply some glue on top of the blocks and then I place the wood board right on top. The riser is all done. It turned out so beautiful. It feels very sturdy and solid. You can place whatever you want on top like plants or candles. It's perfect. For the next DIY, I'll be making a sign and I'll be using one of these thick wood blocks from Dollar Tree. I'll also be applying one of these metallic stickers from Dollar Tree and I'll be painting this one white. I'll be using this gorgeous one on top. Now every design in this pack are all different, but I kind of wish they were matching pairs because I would have loved to place one towards the bottom as well. I think that would have looked really nice. So I just press the sticker down firmly, especially along the edges. Now I'll be painting this with white chalk paint. I'm using a round sponge brush to apply the paint. Now these sponge brushes are so versatile. It does apply the paint quickly and smoothly with good coverage. So I just make sure to completely cover the metallic sticker. I do also use a small brush to get into those hard to reach areas. I also use it to remove any excess paint that may have pooled, especially in the grooves. And I just put that aside to give it time to dry completely. I'll be placing this thick home sign on the wood. You can get this at Dollar Tree and it comes in a pack of two. I will be painting home in black and so I just apply that with a small brush. Now you can definitely customize the wording if home is not your thing. If you have a Cricut you can place whatever word you like or you can even stencil. I just like the font on this wooden home sign. Then I take a sanding sheet and I sand the edges of the wood. I also lightly sand the top and edges of the wording. Before I glue down the word, I'm going to apply some antique wax over the wood with a damp cloth, applying it lightly all over, including the painted metallic sticker. Hey, by the way, if you are enjoying our crafting time together, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Your support means a lot. And if you haven't already, will you consider subscribing? I have many more ideas coming your way, and I would love to have you on this creative journey with me. And after I get that on all over, I go back with a small brush and apply more of the antique wax on the metallic sticker. The goal is to make the details on the sticker stand out, and the antique wax does just that. And then I gently wipe it down. I also use another small brush to clean up and blend out the wax around the sticker. Wow, such an amazing transformation. You would never guess it was a dollar store sticker. And finally, I add some glue on the back of the home sign and I place that right on top of the wood. And this DIY is done and I love how it turned out. I'm going to be using this black frame from Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the cardboard sign and replace it with some one gallon paint stir sticks. I got a pack of 10 at my local hardware store and they were quite inexpensive. So I turn the frame over and I bend back the metal tabs to remove the cardboard. And with some pliers, I pull out the metal tabs and those easily pop right out. Then I measure and mark a paint stick. I want it to fit nicely behind the frame. And then I trim about seven paint sticks down to that size. I'll be staining the paint sticks and I'll be using Bear's water-based wood stain in the shade Special Walnut. So I give the stain a good mix, then I grab a foam brush and I start applying the stain onto the paint sticks. I actually leave a small section on the ends unstained because I will be applying glue to that part later and I want to ensure I get the strongest hold possible when I glue the sticks to the frame. So I apply the stain and I wipe off any excess stain that hasn't been absorbed. I also make sure to apply the stain on the sides of the paint sticks. I leave the back unstained since it's not going to be seen, but you certainly can stain it. I also add a second coat for a deeper finish. Before permanently gluing the sticks down, what I like to do is lay them all out on the frame first and space them out evenly. That way I have an idea as to where to glue each of them down. I add a dab of hot glue directly onto the frame, then I carefully place the paint stick right on top. This way it prevents any excess glue from seeping out and creates a nice clean finish. 
I am going to embellish the frame with some flowers and greenery. I pull out some of the stems of this greenery bouquet from Michaels and a flower from this Dollar Tree flower bouquet. I start by gluing the stems down on the bottom left side of the frame. I start with four stems and I place it down where it looks good, then I hot glue them down. I'm going to have the leaves form kind of an L and I also want to make sure there's some space in between for the flower. So I glue about four stems down and then I glue down the flower right in the middle which creates a nice focal point. And from there I just keep adding on more greenery in areas that need it just to make it look more full and vibrant. I'm going to use this stencil pack from Dollar Tree and I'm going to stencil farmhouse on a small piece of wood plank left over from a larger piece which I used from another project from Dollar Tree. I paint the wood black, apple barrels, black acrylic paint and I brush that on all over the top and the sides but I do leave the bottom unpainted. Then I get a sanding sheet and I gently sand the edges of the wood to distress. I also sand the surface of the wood to dull down any sheen and give it a more weathered appearance. Okay, now that that's done, I place the stencil right on top of the wood, taping the sides with painter's tape so that it doesn't move around. I take a stencil brush and white chalk paint, I'm using the Folk Art brand, and then I gently start dabbing the paint over the stencil. I like to go in circular motions as well, but this stencil is quite thin, so I'm really careful when I do that. I also make sure to dab off any excess paint on a paper towel before stenciling, that way it goes on cleanly and minimizes smudges. Once that's done, I remove the stencil and oh wow, this looks really pretty. Then I glue that down right towards the top center. You can either hang this by securing some rope or string on the back or leaning it against a wall. To hang, I string some beads onto a string and then I secure it on the back. And we're done. I love how this one turned out. I will be making a couple round decorative trays. I will be using a pack of these stove burners from the Dollar Tree. There's two in a pack with one larger than the other. I'm also going to be using these wood craft rings. I got two of them in different sizes. And I'll also be using a couple of this gold woven geometric wallpaper from Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to be lining the covers with the wallpaper. So I just trace them onto the back of the wallpaper. I start with a smaller one, I turn it over and trace it, and then I cut it out. I place it inside just to make sure it fits, and then I peel back a small section of the backing liner on one end to reveal the sticky bottom, and I just carefully peel off the rest of the backing paper while smoothing out the wallpaper. I do the same thing with the larger cover, trace on the back of the wallpaper, and then I cut it out. I peel back and fold down a small section of the black liner, I place it inside the burner, and slowly remove the liner while smoothing out the decorative paper with a scraper. I'm going to be spray painting the rings with this gold metallic paint from Rust-Oleum. So what I'm going to do is line the inner edge of the cover with the rings. I start with the smaller cover and rings. To stick them in place, I'll be using a combo of super glue and hot glue. I got the super glue from Dollar Tree and it came in a pack of three. Another good option is E6000 which works great too. So here's a tip you gotta keep in mind, you want to leave a tiny gap between the rings, about an eighth of an inch. And when you are about 75% done placing the rings, you want to make sure the rest are spaced out evenly. Just take a moment to try it out and see how they look before you start gluing them down. Otherwise, if you just randomly place them, when you reach the last ring, it may not fit or there could be a noticeable gap. So once I'm done with the smaller tray, I work on the larger. Now you can totally just go with hot glue if you want. It does hold things together, but personally I'm not entirely confident in its strength on its own. But another tip, if you want an even stronger hold, something I wish I did, leave some of those areas that will be glued unpainted. 
I'm going to connect these rings together using this white cotton twine. So I cut out a strip and then I put a small dot of glue on one of the rings and then I wrap the twine around the center where the rings are right next to each other to join them together. I wrap the twine about three times around and then I secure with some hot glue and then I just cut out the extra twine. So I do that all around for both trays. And here are the trays all done. I love how they turned out. I want to make a large wooden sign and I'll be using this large decal from Dollar Tree. Now Dollar Tree does have quite a bit of wooden planks that would fit this decal nicely, but I did have this leftover wood from another project and I thought it was perfect. I'll be painting this with chalk paint from Art Mines in the shade Oyster. Before painting, I'll be placing some of these Dollar Tree metallic stickers on the wood. Similar to the one on the previous DIY, these have such a beautiful antique look and detail. I'll be using these four corner pieces and I'm just deciding which way I want to place them. Really, it can go either way. And then I just carefully peel out the stickers, positioning them evenly in the corners. I make sure to press down firmly for a strong bond, especially on the edges, just to give it a tight seal. They actually have good stickiness on the back. The stickers are quite firm and dense, so you can really press down hard without breaking them. I decided to add another sticker on the top middle area. So I'm using one of the stickers from the prior DIY. I'm using the third from the top, which I thought fit nicely. So far, I'm loving the way it's looking. And now it's time to paint. So I'm using the chalk paint that I mentioned earlier from Arts Mind in the shade Oyster. Chalk paint really does give good coverage, but you can use any paint or color you prefer. It doesn't necessarily have to be chalk paint. You can use regular acrylic paint and that works just as well. I brush on the paint, making sure to fully cover the metallic stickers. I also use a little brush to go over some of those details on the stickers in case it went on too thick. I don't wanna fill those details in. Then I take a sanding sheet and lightly sand the edges of the wood. I just wanna give it a very light distressing and just go over the sides. And that's pretty much the only area I focus on. I leave everything else intact. And then I apply the antique wax. I use a lightly damp cloth to apply it on all over the surface and then I buff it in. The dampness really helps to blend in the wax nicely. Any area that's too dark or heavy, I can easily tone it down on a cleaner side of the damp cloth. I also use a dry cloth to blend it in even more and tone down any harsh areas. And then I use a small brush to get the wax on the detailed areas of the stickers where I want it to go on darker. And then I just lightly wipe it down and blend it out. I do the same process on all the corner stickers until I like the way it looks. I definitely darkened and applied more of the wax around the perimeter of the stickers and I love the way that looked. It gave it a beautiful vintage appearance. Now this wood board was looking so stunning at this point that honestly, I started having second thoughts about applying that Dollar Tree decal. I wanted the wording to look clean and I really didn't want that clear sticker part around the words. So I did consider designing some wordings on my Cricut, but I did like the large decal and I figured if later at some point I didn't like it or I wanted to change it up, I could later peel it off. Now applying the decal is easy. I first tape down one side of it onto the board just so that it doesn't move around. And then on the other side, I carefully peel out a few inches of that white backing paper. I even bend it back to crease it and then I rip it off. And then from there, I lay that sticky side of the decal down. And then I carefully remove the rest of the white backing paper while sticking down the decal, smoothing it out as I peel out that bottom layer. And that just helps to make sure that the decal goes on straight with no bubbles, especially since I'm not using any transfer tape. You will definitely want to seal this project to protect the decal and keep it intact. You can also use Mod Podge as well. That's also a great sealer for craft projects. You can lean it against a wall or add some hanging hardware on the back, or you can even just attach some jute cord on the back. But this DIY is done and I really love the way it turned out. I'll be making a basket tray. I'll be using this raffia grass skirt from Dollar Tree. Now this is just raffia, so if you already have some raffia on hand, then you can definitely just go with that. 
the raffia is attached to a jute string. There's a little knot on the end of it, so I just snip that off and then I slide out the raffia. There's a little kind of a knot in the center of each strand. So to remove it, I just gently pull each end. I'll be braiding this with three on each strand to add some thickness to the braid, but you can definitely do more. While I'm braiding, I'll be continuing to glue the raffia at the end to create a long braided rope. So to braid, I tape down at the top three strands of three and I do a very, very loose braid. I do start out with a tighter braid at first, as you can see, but I thought it was just a bit too thin, so I did loosen it up a bit. Now when I ran out of raffia, I instead just glued the strands individually with a spool glue and that just blended together nicely. So I just keep continuing to braid the raffia. I did end up using most of it, but I do leave 12 of them aside, which I'll be using to make the handles of the tray. For the base of the tray, I'll be using this wood round from Dollar Tree. I'll be gluing the braided raffia on top, so first I need to mark the center, and that will be my starting point. I just put some hot glue in the center of the wood round, and I place the end of the braided raffia on top, and then I just wind the raffia rope going in a circle. I also make sure to add hot glue underneath the raffia as I'm going. Now as I'm winding it around and looking at it, you know, I think it would have also looked really nice if I added more per strand, maybe six to eight for a thicker and tighter braid. But with that said, I am loving how this is looking so far. Now I don't wanna glue this all the way to the edge just yet. I do make sure to leave about an inch or so of the wood exposed. As far as the 12 strands I set aside, I go ahead and braid them with four strands on each making it a bit tighter than before, and this will make the handles. I glue one end of that on the wood, and then I determine how long I want the handles to be, and then I glue the other side of the handles down. And then I glue the other handle on the opposite side, making sure it's cut to the same size. Once the handles are on, I just continue gluing down the braided rope until it reaches the end. Now I want the tray to have sides, so I take the extra raffia and I wrap it around the edge, stacking layers on top of each other as I go. I'm able to go about four times around and I just keep an eye on where I started winding it on top and I make sure that the end doesn't go beyond that area so that the sides are even. And finally, I want the handles to be standing upright and not laying flat and so I just hot glue them onto the sides. And there you have it. You can place a little faux plant or greenery or a cute candle arrangement. I love how this turned out. I'm going to be using the small wooden tray from Dollar Tree. I'll also be using this blue rub-on transfer from Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to be adhering that onto the surface of the tray. So I trim the transfer so that it will fit nicely inside the tray because it's a little bit larger. I peel off the white backing paper and I place that inside the tray. And if I measured and cut correctly, it should fit nicely inside. I use the scraper to rub and go over the transfer a couple times. And then I get my little tiny scissors with a very pointy tip to pull back a corner of the transfer. It is really snug inside the tray. To transfer, I just rub all over while gently pulling back the clear sheet. If it doesn't completely transfer, then I just lay it back down and I just rub it over it again with a popsicle stick, which actually worked better than the Dollar Tree scraper. So I just take my time with it. I don't wanna rush it and eventually I get all the transfer down in one piece. I love the blue pattern against the natural wood, which is why I decided to leave the tray as is. I'm going to need four tumbling tower blocks and four craft cubes, and I'm gonna glue them together like so. I'm going to stain them with the same stain I've been using throughout this video from Bear in the shade Special Walnut. I also make sure to stain the sides of the cubes because that part can be seen a little bit, and I do wipe down the blocks to remove any stain that hasn't absorbed. 
Next, I get some jute cord and I just wrap that around the handles. I use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place and I just wind it around and then I secure the ends with hot glue. And this is going to match the stain blocks nicely. Then I hot glue the blocks underneath on each corner. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my new videos. And finally, I brush on some clear wax all over to protect the transfer as well as the raw wood, but you can also use Mod Podge or whatever sealant you prefer. And we are done. using this garden themed ribbon transfer from Dollar Tree and these canvases and these came in a pack of three which is the exact amount that I need. I'm going to be painting the canvases with these Waverly chalk paint. So the first one I'm going to paint in the shade celery and I'm using a round sponge brush to paint because it applies the paint evenly and I can avoid applying multiple layers. I make sure to get closer to the edge but I do leave the outermost area unpainted since I plan to glue a frame on top. Once I get on that first layer, I just pounce the brush over the canvas and somehow it makes the first layer look even more opaque. For the next canvas, I'm going to paint it in the shade Sandstone. So like the first one, I apply it close to the edge and then pounce the brush to fill in any areas that went on lightly. For the last canvas, I'm going to leave it as is. I'll be making a frame using these Dollar Tree blocks. I'll be using 10 blocks to make a frame and I just glue the blocks together like so to make a rectangle with three blocks on the longer side and two on the shorter. I'm using hot glue since I'm just making a small frame and it's going to be glued onto a canvas. Now it's time to put it all together. I also added three more blocks which will hold up the frames. I'm going to stain the frame with this Deco Art Americana gel stain in the shade Walnut. But before I do that, I lightly sand the joints and I find that doing this lightly fills in the areas where the gaps are very prominent. I'm not trying to completely cover it, it's not going to do that, but just lightly blend the joints. The sawdust gets in there and sort of very lightly fills in the gaps naturally. So just brush on the stain with a little brush all over the surface, including the inner and outer sides. And once I get that on all over, I wipe it down with a clean cloth to remove the excess stain. You can definitely paint or stain this any color you like or even keep it natural, which I was also considering. I also make sure to stain those three single tumbling blocks. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using this rub on transfer from Dollar Tree. I'll be using the gardening themed ones, which is perfect for this time of year. There's three of them, so I cut those out. For the sandstone canvas, I'll be applying this long one with the gardening tools. So to apply, I remove the white backing paper and I place the rub on sheet on top of the canvas, centering it. And once it's where I want it to be, I use a little plastic scraper. This one's from Dollar Tree. You can also use a popsicle stick or a spoon and I just go over the rub on design several times. And then I slowly peel off the plastic paper and if there's any areas where the transfer didn't adhere well to the canvas, I just place that plastic sheet back down and I just rub over that area until the whole transfer transfers. For the celery green, I'll be applying the wildflower one and I place that right in the center and I rub over the image and you'll start to notice the image slowly separating from the plastic. And that's usually when I'll start peeling it off. And now for the third and final canvas, I'll be applying this Farm Fresh transfer with a border. So I apply that on top of the canvas, rub over the image and gently peel off the plastic paper. I love that I left this white. Here are the three images. They all transferred beautifully and I love the different colors. To glue the frame, I started off applying glue around the outer edge of the canvas. Now I was a little concerned about applying too much glue and it seeping in the inner part of the frame. So I'm sure I went a little light with the hot glue and unfortunately it didn't hold. 
I could have tried again, but I thought I would just use another type of glue. So instead of hot glue, I'll be using Tight Bond Multi-Surface Glue. So just apply that around the outer edge of the canvas, and then I place a wood frame right on top, making sure the image is centered. Then on the back, I just glue a single block vertically towards the bottom end, and this will help the frame stand up. And this DIY is done, and I'm loving how all of these frames turned out. I'll be using this oval wood shape from Dollar Tree. I'll also be using this large flowery sticker. It comes with two sheets and if you put them together, it forms a butterfly. I think the colors are just perfect for spring. First thing I'm going to do is paint the wood shape. I'll be painting it in the shade white from Apple Barrel. With a sponge brush, I apply the color. Now another reason I'm painting it white is because the sticker does have a white border along the edge and so this will just blend the wood and the sticker together nicely. Otherwise, you can also just trim that white out. Next, I'm going to trace a portion of the flowers that I want to place on the wood. I don't want to cover the whole wood, so I place the wood on top and I just mark the area I want to cut out. So I cut out the area that I traced and then I peel out the sticker and place it on top of the wood. To clean up any overhang, I just sand that area down and that just gives it a nice crisp edge. I also place a few of the single flowers on the wood as well. This is going to be a little riser, so to raise it up, I'm going to trim a 1 by 2 inch wood for legs, which I got at Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint the wood, and I'm going to mix together khaki and territorial beige, thinned out with a little bit of water. So I brush that on and then I wipe out the excess. And I'm only applying the color on the wide sides of the wood as well as the ends. I leave the long narrow sides unpainted because I will be applying glue there. And finally, I just glue those trimmed 1x2s right on the bottom, positioning them so that it's not protruding past the oval shape. Seal it with a layer of Mod Podge or whatever sealer you prefer. And this DIY is done. For the next DIY, I will be using burlap canvases from Dollar Tree, and I'll be using four for this project. The first step is to remove the burlap, which I'll be using later. I just want to reposition it, so I need to pull out the staples. Now to be honest, I didn't realize there were going to be this many staples. This was definitely the longest part of this project and my least favorite. Also, there were some staples holding together the front corners, which I did remove, and I also reinforced any shaky joints with some wood glue. I'll be gluing these four wooden frames together to look like a window pane, just like so. This is Super Glue's wood glue, which I got at Dollar Tree. I want the front to be even and flush, so I do make sure the back is what's facing up. I clamp the frame together and I just continue applying the glue and clamping to ensure a tight bond. Once it's dried, I turn it over and I give it a light sanding. For any areas where there are visible holes or gaps, I just smooth on some spackle over that to cover and smooth it out. I let it dry a bit and then I sand those areas again just to smooth things out even more. I'm going to dry brush on some white chalk paint. This one's from Folk Art and I'm just using a chalk paint brush and I lightly go over the frame. I really don't want it to go on too opaque. I do want it to look a bit distressed and weathered with some of the wood underneath peeking through. Next, I will be gluing the burlap back on and so I trim one down to fit a frame. And then I glue it down on the back. I apply a strip of glue on one side of the frame, and then I attach the burlap to that. And as I'm gluing, I make sure that it's glued nice and tight, gently pulling the fabric, especially after I get two sides down. I did switch to a roller cutter, which cuts smoothly and much more quickly. And I just continue gluing down the rest of the burlap, applying hot glue on the frame one side at a time, making sure to gently pull it back so that it goes on nice and tight. I really love how this is looking already. 
Now to finish it off, I place a little hook in the center. You can also use command hooks if you want to remove it later and change things up. And then just attach a little tin bucket to that. You can place some flowers or greenery inside or attach a little wreath on the hook instead. And we are done! I really love how this one turned out. This DIY is going to be a quick one. I'll be using one of these beaded wood rounds from Dollar Tree. And three of these wooden dice from Dollar Tree. This came in a pack of three, which was exactly the amount I needed. Now this already had a nice dark stain, but the color wasn't evenly applied, especially on the beads. So I'm just going to repaint over it with this gorgeous brown metallic paint from Craftsmart. You can definitely paint this whatever color you want. So I brush on the paint and the color goes on so beautifully and it has a really nice metallic shimmer. Now I make sure the beads get a complete coat of paint. Then I paint the dice. Since I'll be gluing this on the bottom of the wood round, I only paint the sides. If possible, I always prefer gluing bare wood to bare wood. So I turn the wood round over, I remove that little plastic sticker, and I apply some glue on the dice, and I glue that down. I make sure to space the dice evenly. I also use a tarot block to help with the spacing from the edge. Before it dries, I turn it over, and I place some objects on top until it dries completely. And the super easy DIY is done, and I really love how it turned out. Okay, for this project, I'll be making a lantern and I'll be using 36 blocks. I'll be staining with acrylic paint, apple barrels, territorial beige, and khaki, thinned out with a little bit of water. So I brush that on and then immediately wipe it down with a clean cloth before it dries to remove the excess paint. Now I do apply the paint all over the surface and the sides, except for the ends because that's where I'll be applying glue. So first I'm going to be forming a square with four of the blocks. So I just apply a little wood glue on the ends and I form a square. This carpenter square from Dollar Tree really helps. I always love using this, especially when I'm working with these blocks. Now I make two sets of the square and then I'm gonna take four more blocks and glue them right on the unpainted ends and I add that on both of the squares. So these two are going to make the top and the base of the lantern. Next, I'm gluing five blocks together end to end. Now I know I'm kind of speeding through this, but after I glue them together, I do hold them together for a few minutes to give the wood time to bond. But with that said, this glue does dry really fast compared to some of my other favorite wood glues. And I love the little nozzle on this one, especially when you're working with these little blocks. To assemble, I'm going to be gluing the blocks of five vertically on those unpainted ends. So I put some glue on an end and then I take the glue blocks and holding it vertically, I attach the end of that one on the end with glue. So it makes a 90 degree angle and then I take a little square dowel and I use that to push the two together. It also helps make sure that it's standing at a 90 degree angle, otherwise you're going to have a crooked looking lantern. And I do the same thing on all four sides. By the way, if you guys are enjoying these budget Dollar Tree DIYs, don't forget to give a thumbs up, hit subscribe and ring that bell so that you don't miss out on any future thrifty creations. Okay, I give the blocks a little time to bond and then I flip it over and then on that square piece, which is going to be the base, I apply some glue on those unstained ends. And then I very carefully match up the two pieces together so that now I have a top and a bottom. You can place some candles inside or a little faux plant. That Dollar Tree glass plate candle holder also fits nicely inside. It's so simple and stunning. For the next DIY, I'm going to be using a couple of these small wooden crates from Dollar Tree. 
as well as these three quarter inch square dowels, which I got from my local hardware store, cut to about seven inches. I'm going to stain the dowels with this water-based wood stain from Bear in the shade Special Walnut. Before I do that, I mark the areas where I'm going to avoid applying the stain because I will be applying glue on that. So on one side, I mark the height of the crate and I also mark about an inch and a half or so from the top. I love the stain. It goes on so smoothly and because it's water-based, it dries really, really fast. It's very buildable, so I do about a couple coats for a deeper finish. For the crates, I want to leave it as is. I love the contrast of the natural wood against the darker stain, so I just apply some clear wax all over the crates. You can also use Mod Podge or whatever sealant you prefer to protect and seal the wood. Then I apply some glue on the side of a crate and a little on a dowel and I just join them together like so, clamping it and I also wipe out any of the glue that seeped out before it hardens. Then I glue the second crate to the dowel right on top. I also lay it on its side, which helps make sure it's glued evenly. Now you can certainly use a longer dowel, have it go higher, as well as add another crate on top. Then I just clamp it and then glue the other dowel to the other side. And this DIY is done. Place some small faux plants or succulents inside or use it for organization or to display some decor. Project, I'll be using this square wooden tray from Dollar Tree. I love the detailed sides. And just like the first project, I'm going to be placing one of these metallic stickers on one of the sides. So I go ahead and firmly place that on one side. I'll be painting the tray with this Waverly chalk paint in the shade Sandstone. So I brush the paint on all over the tray, except I do leave the bottom unpainted. I paint over the metallic sticker. Now I did have to paint a couple layers on the sticker for it to completely cover. You do have to let each layer dry before adding another, otherwise you may end up just wiping out the paint. So I just use a heat tool to speed up the drying time. Once everything has been painted, I'm going to lightly sand the edges of the curves and I'm just using a sanding sheet to lightly sand. And my favorite part, I apply some antique wax on all over the areas that I painted and I'm using a damp cloth to apply the wax. I apply it over the metallic sticker and I do apply a generous amount because I want it to get into all those grooved areas. And then I just gently wipe out the excess. I apply the wax on all over the tray using a damp cloth which helps make the antique wax go on evenly and lightly. It also helps to blend any areas where I applied too much wax. I also apply it on the areas where I sanded, which gives the tray a lightly distressed appearance. I'm going to be gluing this white pillar candle pedestal from Dollar Tree onto the bottom of the tray. And I just lightly rub on some of that antique wax on the pedestal to match the tray. I do love the white, so I don't oversaturate it with the wax. I also avoid applying the wax on the top of the pedestal. To glue, I'm going to apply E6000 over the topped raised area of the pedestal. You can always add a few drops of hot glue for a quicker hold while the E6000 dries. And then I just flip the tray over and glue the pedestal on top of that, making sure it's centered. And that's it. You can definitely customize to any color you like, but I love the neutral shades. It's quick, easy, and simply beautiful. I'll be using three of Dollar Tree's taper candle holders. To add some height, I'll be gluing two together. So I apply some E6000 on the top rim of one, and then I'll carefully place another candlestick holder on top, aligning the rims together. Once that has completely dried, I'm going to paint with this metallic paint from Anita's in the shade Titanium Gold. I'm using a round sponge brush to apply the paint and I just dab that on all over and this is going to add a beautiful texture to the candle holder. After I apply the first layer on the smaller candle holder, I work on the larger one, dabbing the paint all over until it's completely covered. Now I didn't do a primer on these, but you certainly can for a stronger adhesion, but I will be doing a couple layers and then sealing it with a spray sealer. I really love how this is looking. On top, I'm going to be gluing these glass candle holders from Dollar Tree, and these are gonna complement the metallic color nicely. 
I apply some E6000 on the top rim of the taper candle holder, and then I place a dark candle holder on top. I also flip it over to make sure it's centered. For the larger one, I'm going to be applying glue on the bottom of the dark candle holder on that raised part, and then I just place that on top of the stacked candle holders. I let them both dry completely, and this DIY is done. Wow, I really love how this one turned out. It looks very elegant with a little vintage charm. I will be using this charger plate from Dollar Tree and some jute cord. This one's from Walmart. It was quite inexpensive. I'm going to wrap the cord over the plate. And so to start it off, I'm going to wind it around a few times first, securing with some hot glue. Now you can totally glue it directly onto the plate if you prefer. But I personally like this method because it allows me to easily position it right in the center. I noticed that one side looked cleaner than the other without any visible dried hot glue. So that's the side I chose to face up, which also determined the direction in which I was going to wind the cord. I make sure to mark the center and then I glue the cord down. And then I just wind it around adding some hot glue to secure it down. Now, let me tell you about this rope. It's not exactly a luxury item. It's more like a bargain find. It's cheap and I do like crafting with it, but this rope isn't consistent throughout. Some parts are thicker, others are thinner. So to keep things in line or in a circle in this case, I guide it as I glue it down, making sure it goes down in a nice circular pattern. But you just wanna make sure you're completely covering the plate, not letting any of it peek through. As I get closer to the outer edge where it raises up, I just take my time with it. You are going to need several sticks of hot glue, so just make sure you have those on hand. So I just keep going until I get to the end and the plate is completely covered. I snip off the end and then I just conceal the end of the rope underneath so it's not seen. I do take a lighter and gently pass it over the plate this helps singe off any excess fibers and gives it a clean and polished look. I do want to add some handles to this, so I just cut out some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and then I glue that on the sides. And we are done. I love how this one turned out. Super easy to make, but what a beautiful tray it turned out to be. Hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, especially if you stuck around till the very end. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more content like this, I'd be so grateful if you could give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again. Bye!